Well, hello, everybody. Um, we tried to do a our first live podcast episode tonight, and uh, Facebook did not want to cooperate with us. We tried uh, for over an hour. So uh, I'm going to contact Facebook, see if we can fix the problem, and uh, we'll, we'll try it again sometime. But um, regardless, uh, it is time for our next episode, and I, I wanted to share a few things with you all. Um, that we've talked about in the past, uh, some of them uh, you don't know about. So first off, I want to ask you if you would do me a favor and go to uh, my website, behindthemic.net. Um, sign up for our monthly email newsletter. I'm not going to spam you, I promise. Um, it's just a way to communicate some important things to you, like in December, uh, this month, we're going to be doing some giveaways. Um, a lot of, of guests who have been on and some people that support our show um, are allowing us to uh, do some giveaways. So first off, um, we still have a signed copy of Stephen Curtis Chapman's newest album still. So this will be available um, in December for a giveaway. And we'll let you know more on the uh, in the newsletter and how you can do that. We also have this signed copy. Uh, it's a CD from Casting Crowns and it's their new Healer CD. We also have some uh, book giveaways coming up from a, uh, a guest who we'll have here uh, over the next month. And uh, I don't even have them yet, but uh, the studios have given me copies of the movie Life Mark, which um, if you've watched the podcast in the past, uh, it's been a couple of weeks now. We had Stephen Kendrick on the show talking about the new movie Life Mark and a fantastic movie. It's about adoption. It's about life. Um, it's just a really heartwarming movie. So we're going to be giving copies of that away as well. So please go to our website behind the mic. Dot net. Mike is M-I-K-E, behindthemike.net. Sign up for our monthly newsletter. It's about to roll out here, so go ahead and get signed up now. We'll tell you how you can enter for those giveaways, and we're going to continue to have more giveaways, so make sure you join us for that. Um, today, we found out it is Sunday, December 4th, and we found out that my Ohio State Buckeyes are in the college football playoff. Uh, I tell you that not because I believe that all of you are Ohio State Buckeye fans, but I want to tell you about an upcoming guest that we have. Um, whether you're an Ohio State Buckeye fan or not, you may have seen in the news lately um, a, an incredible guy named Cameron Babb. Cameron Babb uh, has an amazing story. He is a wide receiver, uh, fifth-year senior at Ohio State University, the Ohio State University, and Cam is going to join us on the show next week, and you don't want to miss this interview. It is going to blow you away. He is an amazing guy with an amazing story. Um, so join us. Subscribe so you don't miss those episodes. Remember, we're on YouTube and also on any podcast app that you have. Um, we're also going to be having a conversation with youth pastor Ben Stanhope, um, licensed clinical social worker who specializes in adult Adolescent and Child Psychotherapy, Dr. Mark McNear, is going to be on the show. Um, the author of the upcoming new book called The Healing Church, my friend Sam Black, is going to be joining us. We also have a guy known as the fastest pastor. His name is Don Wickstrom. He's going to be joining us. Um, and also author and president of the D.L. Moody Center, Dr. James Spencer, is going to be joining us. And that's just over the next five or six weeks. We have got a great lineup in 2023. I am truly so incredibly excited to share some of these guests and their stories with you. Um, please tell your friends. Uh, it, it has been an amazing journey, and I am so inspired by the, the stories of our guests who come on. So I hope you are, too. Um, also, coming up, we're going to have a special Christmas episode. This is going to be with some of our young friends who will be sure to inspire you. That episode is going to drop on December 18th, the week before Christmas. 
This is something I've never tried before on the podcast. It is going to be phenomenal. I guarantee it's going to be a shorter podcast, but it's going to be geared only on the Christmas holiday. And I know you guys will be inspired by our young guests who are going to be joining us and doing some incredible, uh, really incredible things. We announced last week that we're going to be soon adding a Thursday show to our lineup with my friend Amanda Valentine called Hope Worth Repeating. Um, Amanda has been on the show twice now, uh, so go check out those episodes if you've not heard them. In addition to our weekly normal podcast schedule, Amanda is going to be sharing hopeful insight that is, well, worth repeating. So we think that you're going to really enjoy this midweek boost of hope. Finally, I want to thank you all. Our show has grown exponentially over the the past couple of months, and we thank you for listening. We really sincerely thank you. Um, If you find the show valuable, you can help us out by rating and reviewing the show on uh, on podcast apps like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and there are others that allow you to rate and review a show. So we would love for you to rate and review us on, on your favorite podcast app. And don't forget, you can also watch the show on our YouTube channel. You can go to youtube.com at Behind the Mic Podcast. And, um, and, and when you go there, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to get reminders of when new shows and videos are going to be dropped. One last thing, if you would like to support the show financially, uh, there are lots of expenses that we have uh, incur monthly uh, for the show. So if you do find the show valuable and you want to to contribute financially, um, you can do that by clicking on the link in our show notes. And the link is called Buy Me a Coffee. It's a really simple uh, link that you can click on a website where you can just enter, securely enter, um, your personal information for your uh, credit card or, or lots of different options there to support the show. And truly, every dollar counts. Uh, it is it has gotten uh, costs have risen along with all the other things that we pay for. So uh, your help would be very much appreciated. Uh, if you have a, someone that you would like us to have as a guest on the show, please let us know. We want to listen to uh, your comments, your feedback, and what you want to hear. So email me at mike, M-I-K-E, at behindthemike.net, or just go through social media, our social media channels, and let us know there who you would like to hear from. And I'm going to do my best to get those on because this show is for you. This show is to encourage and inspire you um, and to point you to Jesus. So um, this week, I want to share a bit of um, just a brief bit of encouragement from one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, and that would be Psalm 139. This is something that um, I have memorized over the years. I love this because, uh, you know, it's so easy to get caught up in all of our day-to-day responsibilities, and we can get overwhelmed with life. Psalm 139 is my go-to reminder that God is so much greater than I can imagine. He knows me better than I know myself, and reading this chapter in Psalms is a great anxiety reducer because it reminds us uh, of so many things. And uh, I'm going to read that for you right now, and then we'll talk really briefly about it, and this will be a shorter episode. So Psalm 139, starting at verse 1, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before. You've laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me and your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. 
You created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body, and all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I'm awake, I'm still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, God. Know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. That was Psalm 139. I love that chapter. Um, You know, beginning in verse 19, David seems to make an abrupt change from all this praise and this wonder to slay my enemies, God. It's a bit uncomfortable that he begins talking about slaying the wicked and hating his enemies. It's important to understand, though, that David is not speaking about those that he hates, but those who hate God and rebel against God. God, in his mercy and his long-suffering, withholds his wrath to those who hate him. One example is the Apostle Paul. Um, You know, he was out killing Christians, and Paul was one of those that David probably would have considered an enemy of God. But because of God's infinite mercy, Saul became Paul after becoming a follower of Jesus, and he did a complete 180 by serving God to the end of his life. The rest of Psalm 139 reminds us, first of all, God is omniscient, which means all-knowing. God knows everything about us, including what we're going to say before we even say it. He's omniscient, all-knowing. Number two, God is omnipresent. He's ever-present. Everywhere we go, he's there. Scripture says, where can I go from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. What a comfort to know that God is everywhere. We also know in this uh, chapter that we are intimately known by God. He says, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, number four, we're made with a purpose. God has a purpose for each and every life that he creates. He doesn't knit us together in our mother's womb for no reason. He has a purpose for each of us. We need to realize that purpose. Fifthly, God is in control. He says, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I struggle with that a little bit at times because I feel like, well, God, if you know what's going to happen, then why should I care? But it's so far, God is so far beyond us that we control our lives. God just already knows what we're going to do, what's going to happen. That's amazing. Far beyond my understanding. Six, we are never alone. You know, the enemy loves to make us feel alone, to feel isolated. He makes us feel worthless. He makes us feel like there is no reason for our existence. We've already talked about God has a purpose for us, but we are never alone. God is always with us, no matter where we are. And finally, number seven, God will eventually be the judge of all. Uh, This goes back to the uncomfortable passage that, starting in 19, where uh, David says, you know, Lord, slay my enemies. Um, David ends this entire chapter with, search me and see if there's any wicked way in me. God will eventually be the judge of those who hate him and those who turn his, turn their back on him. Um, we just need to remain in God, remain in Christ, live our day for him, 
each and every day. Um, it says, when, I'm awake, when I wake, I'm with you. Um, such knowledge is too far, it's far too wonderful for me. I, I don't even understand it. That's what the scripture says. Friends, regardless of what you're going through or what you've already gone through, you are not alone. There is hope. If you're a follower of Jesus, you know that Jesus left heaven to become one of us. He became human. He came to experience life as we know it. If you're a human being, you know that there's pain, there are hurt, uh, there's hurts, there's challenges, temptations. Jesus came to go through all of that. He lived as one of us. Even though he was still God, he lived as a human being. He had to eat and sleep, just like we do. He walked this earth for over 30 years, yet he did it without sin. If you're not following Jesus, know that because he was without sin, he's the only one qualified to become a sacrifice that will cover all of our sins. He died for me. He died for you. He loves you. I encourage you, if you don't know him, turn to him. Give him your life. Live for him. You know, Christmas is coming soon, and... um, It's a day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus. It was his first coming to our world, and he will come back. I hope this encourages you. I hope that you'll bookmark Psalm 139 and read it often as a reminder of the big picture. Life is a big picture. If you step back and look at it from God's perspective, it's not so scary. It's not so overwhelming at times because we know in Psalm 139, God is above it all, and he loves us. You are loved. Well, I also want to encourage you to subscribe to the show. Tell your friends. And next week, remember, we're going to be talking with Cameron Babb. Cameron was a five-star football recruit. He was a fifth-year senior. He's had multiple injuries that largely kept him off the football field until November 12, 2022, against Indiana. Cameron's going to share about that moment Uh, that he'd been thinking about for years and how his faith played a part in that moment. Listen, you don't have to be a college or a a Ohio State fan. If you're a college football fan, you don't want to miss this episode with Cam Babb. Well, until next week, remember, if your life is grounded in Jesus, even in the darkest times, there is hope.